Now you might've noticed in that last screenshot, sometimes I was referencing specific values like eight, 12, 16 for the padding. And then other times I was referencing primitive tokens as an alias. And the way to do that, if I hop into my UI kit here, is inside of the local variables, if I detach this, I can either type the number eight or when you hover, you get this little variable icon and you can click on that and actually search for radius two, like so. And now it is referencing that variable that's coming from a separate library so you can create a little bit of a trickle down effect like you would with a component. Now there's not gonna be a single rule of thumb that I can give you that's gonna apply to every situation because this is a perfect example of something that has to work backwards from what makes sense for your system. That being said, I do have a little mental model that I've been using that's been really helpful. And that is that I only wanna alias primitives for things that have a smaller range. So maybe I'm only dealing with five or six numbers rather than 20 or even 30. Or second, they're used really frequently as an alias where the cost of having to switch would be pretty painful because they exist throughout my system. Or third, that they might actually change. There are a lot of primitives that get defined one time and then never change throughout the life cycle of a product. So in that case, just avoid the complexity because that extra level of connection is going to have a cost. So let's use a couple of examples. Size, is it a small range? Well, definitely not. We can use almost any size in our library. Would it be used frequently as an alias? Yes, all the time throughout our entire system. How likely is it to change? Well, I would suggest that size is never gonna change because you're almost always going to pick a four point scale and then you're gonna stick with it. I've never heard of an example of a company deciding, you know what, we should switch from an eight point scale to a four point scale and change all of our underlying variables. So if this was the case, this is an example where I'd probably err on the side of not adding the additional complexity. And if we zoom back out to the previous screenshot, you'll see in the size, I've entered the raw values rather than referencing space 10 or space nine or space eight or something like that. Let's do color next. Is it a small range? Definitely not. There's a huge range for color. Is it used frequently as an alias? Constantly. Is it likely to change? This one's kind of on the fence. Maybe, maybe not. It kind of depends on your system a little bit. We'll talk about this in other videos, but color is a perfect example where for some teams, it's gonna make all the sense in the world to have a primitives library and link them and have all of those connections exist. But for a scrappy startup with two people, maybe not. You could avoid a lot of work and remove that extra layer of complexity from your system. Okay, how about border radius? Is it a small range? Actually, I think I would consider this a small range. Most products are only gonna use four, five, maybe six different border radiuses where it's not gonna clutter any files if you're importing it. Is it used frequently as an alias? Yes, absolutely. How about, is it likely to change? Maybe. In just a two year period at Maven, we went through a rebrand and changed border radiuses where if I would have had these variables, it would have made my life way easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a green check mark. And this means this is an example where it's gonna make a lot of sense to use primitives. And so again, if we zoom back out, you'll notice here, border radius, I am referencing a primitives library that I am importing into my UI kit file. Okay, last one, let's look at breakpoint. Is it a small range? Definitely. Is it used frequently as an alias? Yeah, you're probably gonna be attaching it to a lot of parent frames. Is it likely to change? This one can be a little bit of a question mark, but if you really think about how it relates to UI kit components specifically, a button doesn't need to know the specific pixel value associated with a breakpoint. All it needs to know is how it's supposed to look at each breakpoint, and then which breakpoint it's within. So I'm not actually referencing any breakpoint aliases in this collection. And that's a big part of what makes this simpler. All right, enough of these screenshots in theory, let's actually build something. I'm gonna go ahead and create an icon button that exists without any text. And so I've drawn my frame, and the first thing I'm gonna do is set the size using my variable.